Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Busola. So, I have had this pair of girlfriend jeans that I keep wearing over and over and over again. Can you blame me? They're so comfortable. They're shaped, flattering, skinny. <laughs> and they're always there for you. But anyway, I wasn't ready to get rid of this jean, so I decided why not distress them. Rip them nicely and make them look brand new. I have worn them so many times, and in fact, you can see a picture of me wearing it here. And yes, I love them. But don't get me wrong, I do still like the boyfriend jeans. They, they will always be staple in my closet. But you cannot deny the fact that the girlfriend jeans are super chic. They're kind of like classics. They will always be there for you, just like your girlfriends in real life. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe it's not girlfriend. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> anyhow, I'll keep forgetting. I love you, I love you all. <laughs> but anyhow, let's just get right into it and here we go. A girlfriend jeans to me is a pair of perfectly fitted jeans from the waist down to the ankles. And I think a pair of distress jeans is a whole lot more chic. Before trying this DIY, I would suggest you practice first on an old pair you don't mind throwing away in case it doesn't turn out right. Now that you have your jeans, you will need a very good pair of razor edge scissors, just like the one I am using in the video, a tweezer, mine is stainless steel, and a washable pen or a marker. I am actually using an old lip pencil. Bend your knees so you can get the kneecap. Then draw lines across your kneecap to show the exact spots where you want ripped and distressed. I definitely want these areas on my kneecap and actually hmm, I don't mind having one below my kneecap right here. Now moving on to the other leg, I would love just one, just one single rib on this knee. I mean, I don't want to keep it too busy. I just want to keep one leg busy and then the other one, just a simple distress or rib. That's it. That's all I want. Now, starting with one leg at a time, you want to fold it sideways then start cutting along the marked lines horizontally. Since I am thinking about cutting the lines or even having them closer, I have decided I am actually going to cut in between the already marked lines just to keep the distressed areas even closer than I initially wanted. It is okay. It's fine. It's still going to turn out right. Don't worry. <laughs> Now to the other leg, do the same thing, 
cut horizontally on the marked line. Because the plan is to keep the Y threads, I am going to cut just right below this first line, right here. Yeah. And you will see why I did that as we move along. Now, this is the fun part. Slide your fingers in between those cut out holes you already made and try to with your tweezer try to pick out the white threads on the very edge of the lines the cutouts you want to make sure you pick out the whites and even though it might seem a little difficult in the first place it is okay start with maybe one or two once you get at least two threads out it will loosen the edges of the cutouts and then you want to start taking out the blue threads try I know I have very shaky hands sometimes but if you're lucky enough to have very steady <laughs> hands what I will suggest actually is try to keep your fingers close together when you hold when you're holding onto that little piece now start pulling out the blue th threads once you're able to create an eye once you're able to create an eye like an opening you can then slide you can now start to pick them out sideways like just slide your hand or your fingers kind of sideways like maybe outwards yeah so that just like that it starts to get easier as you move along it starts it just yeah there might be a little bit of you know hiccups here and there you might pull out two at the same time um, which might actually make it harder you want to try to get it one strand at a time Look, let me tell you, it's not as difficult as you think. Once you can get a hang of it, it becomes so fast and you're done in no, no time. So don't be afraid. Don't think, oh my God, this is going to take forever. Really, it doesn't. Well, you can take a break, of course. If you want to continue the next day, sure, why not? You don't have to finish it in one day, but I, I mean, you really can. You can actually, it took me, I think, all together plus the little breaks in between maybe I stopped to do something or do something else <laughs> I would say it took me all together maybe about an hour um, yeah it's really it's really not hard it's very easy and it depends on how many cutouts you want if you just want to do one and done or one on one leg one on the other leg there you go it, it, it's even faster but um yeah there so you really just want to get once you can open it up you're fine once you get that open it just becomes so easy as you as you move along it's it becomes fun really it does you start to even like it because <laughs> then they all the strands start to slide out but if you notice I start to pull them away from me like if I yes because as I move closer to myself in order in order for me to pull the strands out easily I have first I have my two fingers my thumb and my pointing finger very close to one another so that I can see and hold it hold down the um, the fabric in order for me to be able to pull the strands out very easily and quickly so hey there you go it's, I think it's fun. I like it, actually. I really enjoyed it when I was doing mine, especially when I got a <laughs> hang of it. And yes, you can always clean up, you know, once you have a few um, strands all tied up in between the threads, you can always, you know, pluck them out or clean them out. But I have to tell you, it's all going to fall out by the time you're done. And you'll see why I say so. <laughs>
so this is what it should look like and don't worry it's all gonna fall into place eventually for this one particular cutout which is slightly above my kneecap I am just going to loosen out the white threads and just let the edges um, right there kind of loosen up I'm not gonna do anything else I'm just gonna let the white threads out and just leave the the whole there kind of rough and once it is done it's washed you can now put it in the dryer depending on how you know how ripped you want it to look you can put it in the dryer again and let it run um, just remember the by the time you start to wash the jeans very often by the time you keep washing and, and drying washing and drying um, the holes will start to expand so just keep that in mind now finally you want to trim off the edges and if you noticed all the little um, blue strands that got caught up while I was trying to take out the um, the strands initially have washed out so it always comes out clean after that machine wash and dryer it's always you know it helps clean out anything that you know it's kind of cut up in between the threads um, so yeah there you have it and now we can just style this baby as we all know spring is soon i was going to say fast approaching but then i realized maybe i shouldn't say that i mean considering the fact that i am from toronto i live in toronto so uh maybe hopefully spring will be here soon and then summer and of course we all know this is the perfect time to start pulling out all your distressed pairs and start styling them which is why i decided to style my distressed pair for spring because i'm totally feeling the spring vibe right now anyway anyway <laughs> so here we go a leather jacket is a definite wardrobe staple and a brilliant transitional piece for spring i love that it has that edgy shake factor and pairing it with a distressed girlfriend jeans just makes the whole look so effortlessly chic These truths to be self-evident, that all art is created equal, that it is endowed by its creators 